Hi everyone, my name is Cassie and you're watching The Victorian Thimble. Today, we're making Wilhelmina Woodmouse's head and I'm gonna show you how to attach whiskers. Let's go. Hey YouTube, welcome back for phase two of making Wilhelmina Woodmouse. Today, we're focusing on making the head. So with the head, these are the parts that we're looking at using today. Right. So you would already recall from week number one, we already got all our supplies. We went over the list, we have the fabric, we have the um, buttons for the eyes and the arms, we have the elastic, we have the stuffing, we have all the different parts that we need, so this is good. Now, what we did last week was we cut out all the pieces and marked them up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the instruction book on the part that is how to make Wilhelmina Woodmouse. And for this week, we're doing the head. Now I notice with this instruction book, a lot of the time they'll start you on some instruction and, and then say, go see how this was done on the other animal. So with these directions, most of the directions for how to make Wilhelmina's head are off of making Luna Lappin's head. But honestly guys, it's pretty straightforward. So here's the parts that we, the two cut out head pieces, right? The two, cut two of each of the ear inner part and outer part. And then of course, you're gonna need your pattern piece so that you can mark out all the whisker parts. And then finally, we will need buttons and embroidery floss at the end, but those are actually finishing parts of the project. We're gonna do a couple of videos from now. So today we're focusing on the head assembly. So the thing that I was looking at with this project is this is the first one of making Luna Lappin's friends that I have to add whiskers. And I'm gonna show you how to attach whiskers. So with that being said, let's get on to part two of making Wilhelmina Woodmouse. Now we're gonna get started on Wilhelmina's head. The first thing you need to do is get out your pattern piece and you need to somehow get these um, whisker markings and the eye markings in this match point onto the fabric. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can pattern punch or you can use the pin method that I've shown you before. So what I'm opting for this time today is I'm actually just going to try hole punching this all the way around here. I think it's pretty obvious that these holes are far too large. You're not gonna color that in all the way. You're gonna put dot markings in the middle, but it is going to make marking that out really easy. I'm just gonna use a regular hole punch to punch this out or I'll just snip it with some scissors. It'll be the easiest way to mark out that eye. All right, I'll be back. And here it is everyone with the, uh, I just cut out the eye with a tiny little pair of snips. This is ready for marking now. Now we're on to the next steps. You can see that we have two of these cut out. So what the directions say to do is you're gonna take two right sides together and we're gonna stitch all the way around and then we're gonna trim the excess uh, seam allowance and turn it right side out. I'll also just point out here that you can see along the bottom, there is a little notch to one side and we do have the marking for where the folding of the ear will be. So this, uh, you're just gonna wanna make sure when you're putting your right sides together for the gray fabric and the print fabric, line up these notches together and then you'll know you have it in the right order. And now you can see that we have sewn these. These actually were hard to do because 
The rule of sewing I've always followed is you sew with what we call a baggy bottom because the feed dogs will move and um, even the fabric out. That didn't work. This actually sewed better this way. I had to sew both of these a couple of times and pick a lot of stitches, right? Like you can see here how the stitching was not straight. I have this enough that I am satisfied with it. So the directions do say to trim your seam allowance first. So here we go. We are just gonna trim it down to more like a one eighth of an inch. Now that you have your seam allowances uh, trimmed, you're gonna turn these right side out. Then what the directions say to do, we're actually gonna work this with an iron and with your fingers a bit so that you can see the uh, edge of the gray. This, as per the directions, we're gonna fold on that little fold line like this. You see that? And this, as per the picture, is going to become her right side ear. Everyone, so here's the mouse ears tacked into place, just like the directions said to do. We've got this stitch, so you have the printed fabric on the inside, the gray felt on the outside, and then I've just basted this down into place as per the directions. And now the next steps that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna take the heads here, and as per how the directions go, first we're gonna attach this part along here like this, so that when it's turned right side up, you're getting that. And then we're gonna fold it this way. Do you see that? What we got going on here? It's gonna take a little bit of, you gotta fuss, right? Um, but anyways, we're gonna run all that. And then when you turn it right side out, do you see how you're gonna have one half of a mouse head and then we'll get the other half going all right everyone <clears throat> so now you can see we have the two head half halves assembled um when i inserted these ears into the folds they didn't quite go to those markings there these will press out with a heat iron honestly that's not a big deal my bigger concern is do i have this far enough in here to leave enough seam allowance here to attach these. Oh my goodness, you guys. I ended up picking the ears out again because if you don't have the ears set far enough back in here, and I'm sorry guys, I know my hands are a mess right now, right? Anyways, once you stitch this and turn your ear right side out like this, what I want you to see, don't worry about that pen mark. I have sandwiched this ear now as far, look at the holes from picking stitches. I'll fix that. I have sandwiched this ear as far into that opening as I can, but do you see what it has done? Is it's created enough seam allowance over here that once you've taken a quarter inch seam allowance to stitch it together, there will still be space left between Wilhelmina's ears like the picture let me show you. you see when you look at the picture there is a little bit of space between her ears so the point is if you stitch this with enough seam allowance because your ears are pushed back tightly into that fold then the rest of the head is going to go together the way you want the directions call for elastic sized thread for the whiskers for the mouse but this is all I have guys, and it's just maybe a little bit thick. I was gonna use it and then I changed my mind. The next thing I went on to. I did a cozy thread that you saw at the beginning of the video and I do like that it's got some, uh, you know, stickiness to it, but. I'm still thinking, oh, I don't know if that's right either. Here's what I think I'm settling on. And so I've come full circle to, I think I'm going to use this stuff here. It's just dollar store. Floss. I'll show you the packaging. All right. Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's crafting stuff. Next, I want to show you that I took an embroidery needle and I have threaded it. And then what I did is at the end, 
I've done two knots. Count them. One, two. So I've made a double knot in the fabric, in the thread. It's quite strong. This is quite thick, but here's the secret. When you're going to do your whiskers, get yourself a test scrap of fabric. Okay. And when we're going to do this, all that you're going to do is with your double knot in the end, you're going to insert it in the fabric, but when we do it on the actual face, we're gonna come through on these marks. And what you're gonna do is just pull it up like this. Now watch this. So we have a double knot on the back, right? Watch how hard I can pull this. Watch this. Like, that is strong, guys. That is solid, it is not gonna come out, which is amazing, fantastic, this is what we want. So this is how we are going to attach whiskers to the mouse. The directions call for you to actually assemble the mouse head first, stuff it, and then go in with your embroidery thread to pull these through there. But I say, why would you do that with the head assembled if you can do it before you assemble the pieces and simply pin them out of the way? So we're gonna do it the Victorian thimble way and we are gonna do the whiskers before we assemble the head. Let's go. All right, everyone, I wanted to show you what I have here. And again, always lint from this purple blouse I'm halfway done making for myself. It's stuck to the table and sticking to my project. I will clean it up at the end for sure, but I just want to show you what this looks like. So here is one half of Miss Wilhelmina Mouse. All right. And you can see we got the little eyebrow whiskers coming out. I cut these at my grid on my cutting table here you see I cut them one inch and then all the whisker ones coming out the bottom these ones I cut at a length of two inches they're not gonna stay that length I'm gonna cut trim them down but I can't I can't effectively trim any of this until the head is assembled but the beauty of the way that I've decided to do this is these whiskers are all soft enough that you can just push them like this out of the way so when you're laying your two sides together and stitching the whiskers will be out of the way but they'll be there when you're done but now we have the two halves of Miss Wilhelmina Mouse's head here that are going to be assembled and stuffed the next things we just have to do is stuff the head and it will be done I just want to take a minute here to talk about this next part of the video that I'm going to show you and that is about how I had to go back and correct a piece of the head. So with Wilhelmina's head we have this um, you know Y shaped piece that we insert the ear, we stitch it so that when you turn it out your ear, the ears are sticking up like this right? And so the thing is if the seam allowance at the ends of those isn't big enough then the ears up top of the head are gonna be like straight up like this instead of angled to the crown sides of the head. And so all these spacing and distances really matter. And I just wanted to share with you guys this extra tip inside today's video about how we make Wilhelmina's head is that don't be afraid to take the time to um, measure very carefully and stitch it carefully and make sure it is as perfect as you possibly can make it. And if it isn't, if you're not happy with it, and if you're not stitching something like a vinyl or a leather that um, once you make the hole, it wouldn't come back, most fabrics, guys, most fabrics are quite forgiving. If you need to pick the stitches, a little bit of steam press with the iron, and those holes will tighten up and close up and you can start over. So if you're willing to take the time that it takes to go back and fix your mistakes. Never tell yourself it's going to be good enough because it won't be. 
If you can see the problem midway through your construction, you have every reason to believe that every angle and bit that you were off is gonna start showing up in how that garment hangs, how the fabric might pull, all those little details. So guys, just be willing to take the time. I'm demonstrating to you here in today's video that um, I wasn't happy with how the ears looked, so I actually went back, I picked them out, lined it up, jammed it in really tight and made sure it wasn't gonna slide, and I stitched it again, and we're getting the reward in the end because the ears are gonna be in the right place. So I hope that's helpful to know because I don't mind sharing secrets and tips with all of you, right? I want everyone to be able to sew great and I want the passion and the practice of sewing to live on through all of us. So I want you to turn out your very best projects too. So therefore, take that time, pick the stitches if you need to and do your very best, your most excellent with every stitch. Thanks for listening to this little segment, guys. All right, back to the video, here we go. And one more thought and explanation around the way that I've opted to do this. In the book, the difference between my whisker method and what they ask for in the book is in the book, they're suggesting that you assemble the head first and after the head is assembled and stuffed, you're gonna go in with these pieces and pull them through. So that is one possible way. The way I opted to do it, I just feel like it really let me bring up those whiskers at exactly the pen points that I wanted them to be. I'm not gonna be trying to work like this with a needle through a stuffed animal head because I did it while it's still flat. So the tricky part of this, which is probably why her directions didn't say to do it the way I'm doing it, is there's a lot of potential for mistake here, but it doesn't have to be. You see the way I'm gathering all this up? You need to make sure as you're stitching this seam line here, that these whiskers don't get sewn into the seam line or you're gonna be picking stitches and you're gonna get frustrated. So when you do this, I don't care if uh, we just push it out of the way, pin it, put a piece of scotch tape, Whatever it takes, we're just gonna make sure those whiskers stay out of the way, and we're gonna do this closing step of stitching the head shut and then stuffing it, but that is my technique. I find it easier to attach the whiskers while the head is flat, and I hope this was helpful for you too. Next steps, let's get her stitched. I wanted to show you the piece all pinned before I sew it, so here it is. I've made sure that the end pieces are lined up, pin all the way around the edges and then just feel and make sure there's none of those whiskers in the areas that you're gonna sew. The ears are in the middle there, everything's pushed to the center. This is carefully pinned, it's good. But this was actually really easy to do and um, then I'm just gonna do it on time lapse and show you me turning this right side out. All right, here she is. Her head is stuffed. Her whiskers are long. <laughs> and now we just have to add the stuffing, but you can see the time I took to make the space between the ears has worked, right? All right, let's get her stuffed. All right, it's done. Here is Wilhelmina Woodmouse's head. So we'll take a nice close-up look here. First of all, this opening was so tiny. It was actually pretty challenging to stuff her. Um, but anyways, you can see we got a seam down the back. We ended up with like a nice space between the ears. Remember, I had to go back and pick some stitches Technically, this is not perfectly centered, but a general rule of thumb is if it's only two stitch lengths or less, you're probably okay. That's the tolerance that I was taught. Two stitch lengths is the tolerance. So I'm pretty sure that does fit within a two stitch length tolerance. We're gonna decide to call that enough and leave it alone. But you can see she's got her little fabric ears here. Aren't they cute? Such a pretty little print, right? So there's her sweet little ears. 
all nicely folded forward and everything. And she's got her little whiskers. We've got the positioning for the button eyes that are gonna be attached. And as I described to you, even though it makes you a little crazy to look at this right now, I don't actually wanna trim the whiskers until I see her head on her body and you know, just get that full perspective before we trim it. But in any event, there she is, Wilhelmina Woodmouse, her head. <laughs>